Edge computing is a networking strategy where data is processed and stored at the periphery of the network, as close as possible to where the data is generated. By doing this, we can limit bandwidth, reduce latency, decrease energy consumption, increase reliability, and improve data privacy. Before we dive into the specifics, let's take a look at an example of a network architecture. As users, we often interact with devices that generate data, like personal computers and smartphones. We can also have connected sensors that do not require user input, known as the Internet of Things, or IoT. A sensor is any device that detects, measures, or responds to physical characteristics in its environment. For example, a thermostat might use a sensor to measure temperature. Other common sensors include pressure, light, motion, and heart rate. Sometimes, data is processed locally on the device, like when you play a single-player game on your phone. But for our purposes, we will assume that data collected on these devices needs to be aggregated, analyzed, or shared with other devices. To accomplish that, our endpoint devices use communication protocols like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and 5G to talk to networking devices like routers and cell towers. Depending on the connections, information can move between these devices as well as to and from servers. A server is a computer or cluster of computers that stores, processes, or moves data for other computing devices. The massive global network of networks we know as the Internet can be used to perform remote data processing. When we use such devices to run applications, store data, and analyze data, it is known as cloud computing. You are probably already familiar with many applications that rely on cloud computing. For example, streaming movies and music with Netflix and Spotify. Or maybe you've used customer relationship management tools like Salesforce and HubSpot. File hosting services like Dropbox and Google Drive are also examples of cloud computing. All of these tools and application run on large remote servers, likely using one of the major cloud computing platforms, like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. Cloud computing runs on large clusters of servers that can take up full rooms or entire buildings. This massive amount of computing power means that processing can easily be scaled based on your needs, remote access is at your fingertips, and the physical resources are often managed by these large companies, so you don't need to worry about finding space, setting up racks, and building a network. However, there are times when you may want to perform your processing away from the cloud. The edge refers to any computing equipment at the boundary of an enterprise or internet service provider's network. The definition of network boundary can get a bit fuzzy, but the edge is essentially all of the gear not included in the cloud. By 2025, there will be a predicted 7.3 billion smartphones in the world and a predicted 41.6 billion IoT devices. That's a lot of data being generated. In fact, if we just look at IoT devices, the International Data Corporation predicts that in the year 2025, all these devices will produce 80 zettabytes of data. That's approximately 200 million terabytes each day. Most modern laptops have about one terabyte of storage, so that would mean around 200 million laptops get filled with data every day. To get some kind of value from this data, it needs to be analyzed and processed. In our cloud computing setup, that would mean transmitting huge amounts of data across various networks every minute of every day. One way to combat that is to use edge computing. Rather than transmit all that raw data across the internet and hog bandwidth, what if we process the data right on the end devices themselves? As these endpoint devices get faster, more powerful, and cheaper, they can start to do some of the complex computing rather than relying on cloud servers. Once computation is complete, the devices can just send the results or notifications. In almost all cases, the compiled results require less data transmitted over the network. Additionally, it might take tens or hundreds of milliseconds for data generated by an end device to traverse the internet to reach its intended processing point. While powerful cloud servers can often process the data quickly, 
the results still must travel to their intended target, which could be the IoT device itself or perhaps a notification to, say, a user's phone. This round-trip travel time is known as latency, and if your device needs to respond in less than a few milliseconds, the results could be catastrophic. For example, let's say you have automated equipment monitoring on a factory floor. If a safety or maintenance emergency comes up, 100 milliseconds might be too long to shut down the production line. While edge devices might not have as much processing power as their cloud counterparts, we can reduce network latency to get results in a few milliseconds or even microseconds. From the perspective of the internet service providers, these end devices are far away from the main backbone and cloud servers, in both terms of physical distance and the number of router hops it takes traffic to reach these devices. As a result, you will often see such devices grouped together in a category known as the far edge. Similarly, the collection of routing equipment and servers that are closer to the cloud is known as the near edge. In recent years, there has been a growing trend to replicate powerful cloud computing services to local or regional servers and routing equipment. Cisco coined this term fog computing. It offers powerful processing while reducing latency and limiting the usage of internet backbone bandwidth. This is the Thingy91 from Nordic. It is an IoT device starter kit. In addition to a variety of sensors, it also has enough processing power to perform some basic analytics, including simple AI. If we can accomplish all of our processing needs with this device, it saves us from transmitting all that raw data on the network, which in addition to saving bandwidth and latency, it also saves power as transmission can take a lot of energy. It is also smaller and consumes less energy than a full computer. Let's say that your IoT sensor has limited or no internet connection. By processing on the device itself, we can increase the reliability of operation by reducing its dependency on a network connection. Finally, we can improve data privacy by processing locally. Let's take a look at another example. This is a person detection board from Useful Sensors. It does all the machine learning on the chip to determine if there is a human visible in the camera. It can be used for things like smart doorbells and intelligent HVAC systems. By never transmitting the raw image data, you can rest assured that your face and habits are not being collected in some database. To review, the main benefits of using edge computing are saving on bandwidth, limiting latency, reducing energy usage, increasing reliability, and improving data privacy. While edge computing can be incredibly useful, there are some limitations. The first is that most edge devices do not have the same amount of computing power and resources as large servers. Sometimes you need that raw computing power, so your only option is to use cloud platforms. Second, it will be on you and your network operators to set up the infrastructure and remote access to these devices rather than relying on cloud services to do that for you. In cloud computing, it's usually straightforward to scale your operations by simply paying for more resources. However, in edge computing, scaling your compute power often means purchasing and installing additional devices or servers. Finally, many IoT devices come from the factory with inadequate security protections, making them a prime target for attackers to scrape data or enter your network. To mitigate this potential threat, you will want to develop and enforce a cybersecurity plan that includes all edge devices. With the benefits and limitations in mind, let's look at some examples where edge computing shines. You've probably seen the myriad smartwatches on the market. Much of the processing is done on the watch or phone, which are clearly edge devices. This type of wearable technology allows us to track our fitness goals and monitor various health levels. But how about some edge technology that might not be so visible? Many factories use cameras and other sensors for automated quality control measures, such as visual inspection and predictive maintenance systems. These techniques help find defects faster and identify when equipment needs to be repaired, thus saving the company time and money. Another popular tech trend is self-driving cars. These require edge computing on the vehicle itself, as waiting for AI processing in the cloud might take too long or never arrive if the connection is broken. 
Cloud and edge computing serve different purposes. Carefully weigh the benefits and limitations of each against your particular business needs. In the next video, we will look at the history of AI and machine learning and how this technology is being used to solve unique problems. Thank <laughs> you.